Hey everyone, it's Ornella Hernandez with Web3 TV and I'm in Paris for day two of the Paris Blockchain Week. I am sitting here with John Wiz, the CTO, Chief Technology Officer at Algorand. How are you today, John? I'm great, Ornella. Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. So is it your first time at Paris Blockchain Week? No, I've been a few times. Um, I have to say it's great. It's a great moment for the industry to come together and I think reflect on what's been achieved over the last couple of years because uh, whilst the markets haven't been so hot, uh, the development scene has been. I agree, I agree. It's, it's The turnout yesterday and today so far has been really good. So many people came um, just for this event. They traveled to Paris. So since you said people are celebrating the, the triumphs and the evolution, I'd like to ask you, what do you think of that evolution? Like, how would you rate the state of our industry now, given all the cycles we've gone through? Well, it's an interesting question. I think we're getting better. I've been working, I guess, professionally in blockchain since around 2017 uh, when I worked with uh, Consensus on Ethereum. And so I've seen things ebb and flow over those kind of, I guess, seven years. I think, though, we're reaching a point of maturity for the industry. Not saying everything's mature. You still have a dog with a hat worth $3 billion. Um, but in terms of, you know, the key and important things, the decentralization of the networks, the sophistication of the networks, the developer experience, so the quality of the tools that people build on these platforms with, and indeed, I think the maturity of interoperability standards and, and the, uh, the general uh, cross-chain collaboration, I think this stuff is improving and I think we're heading in the right direction. And what is Algorand's role in this evolution? Well, you know, I don't want to speak with hubris, but I'm very excited about the things that we've done over the last year. Algorand is, I think, poised to be one of the most important layer ones in the space. It is fit for purpose. When it comes to processing transactions in a genuinely decentralized and secure manner, Algorand gives people a user experience that is similar to the existing Web2 technologies that, all, that are out there already. Um, and this year specifically, we have fixed, I think, what the one glaring issue with Algorand. A year and a half ago, Algorand's developer tools were terse and difficult to use. And this year, well, for the last year and a half, we've been working tirelessly to bring a regular, easy, enjoyable developer experience to the Algorand platform so that you can build apps using languages like Python and you can do it in a way that doesn't suck. So we're talking about algo kits here, right? That's the, the term for this new development kit. And so how do you attract then these developers to build on Algorand and build new blockchain apps? So I think the answer is you've got to meet developers where they are. Asking developers to come and learn some new esoteric language, to spend time skilling up on a technology that may or may not be there in four or five years, that's too much to ask. Instead, we're bringing the technology to them. So we've spent time making sure that we can use industry standard languages like Python in a semantically and syntactically normal way. We don't want to take a flavor of Python and make you learn that. So we're, it's just regular Python that you learned in school. And we're opening, uh, I think, the floodgates to people. Um, we've reduced the learning curve from something that was quite steep to something that is completely shallow. And now you can come and try this thing without spending any time or effort. And so um, we're very excited about bringing a developer experience that will feel like the same experience you have when building apps for Windows or Mac OS. It's just easy peasy. And now you can, you can, you can harness the power of a decentralized blockchain like Algorand using those um, very simple and well-established tools. And what kinds of things, what kinds of apps would you like developers to build more of on Algorand? You know, I think it's an interesting question and I'm sure people have, have I, the, probably the, the usual answer is or WAs or whatever's hot at the moment. I'm completely agnostic to this stuff. From my point of view, platforms like Algorand are like operating systems, just like iOS or Android. I essentially don't mind what people build. Um, whatever they build is good for me. I just want to see people take advantage of the uh, virtues of platforms like Algorand. There are certain classes of application that are just not possible to build on traditional operating systems. Algorand allows you to build those applications. And there are applications where you need a root of trust, you're, you're concerned about provenance, you're concerned about disintermediation, or you need decentralized execution of code. So that's because you guys solved the trilemma, right? Uh, I don't like to brag. Okay, so that covers developers. But what about investors? How do you attract new investors in Algorand? I think the answer is uh, make it a, an inviting place for people to be. And so once you have a rich tapestry of applications that are on the chain, um, those applications will attract users. Users beget, I think, um, uh, investors. I think, I think essentially, just like the App Store brought the iPhone to ubiquity, I think we have to do the same thing. Um, we have to make it so that 
Algorand is a buzzing metropolis of a hive of activity, and once we get to that place, then uh, it'll naturally flow that, uh, or follow rather, that um, investors are interested. So price volatility doesn't doesn't phase you. I mean, it, it does in one way. When the price of Algorand uh, ebbs and flows, um, the security of the network changes because. As a price of a proof of stake network generally, uh, as, a, as the price of a token and a proof of stake network declines, so too does the cost of attacking that network in, in terms of the fiat currencies. And so, of course, I care uh, about the security of the network, but we try not to focus too much on price because largely it's, um, I guess, not as relevant as other things that we're working on. And so what else are you working on? What can we expect from Algorand? What's the roadmap for this year? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. So um, we're not stopping with basically bringing the best developer experience of all time to Algorand. No way. Um, following this, we're going to be rolling out, I think, two very important things this year. The first, we're changing the consensus mechanism on Algorand. At the moment, when you, mint, when you make blocks in Algorand, when you mint blocks, when you mine or whatever you stake, you don't get paid for that activity. And that's in contrast with the rest of the industry, where usually you do get rewarded for doing that. And so, um, on Algorand, we're going to be rolling out consensus incentives. So very shortly, just for holding Algorand, you can get rewarded directly for supporting the security of the network. It's really important. And so, naturally, it will follow, uh, as a corollary, that the number of nodes in the network will increase because you'll have more people running nodes to earn rewards. And so, how do we take advantage of that? The second uh, item on, on our agenda for the roadmap is rolling a peer-to-peer -peer style network. So, we're changing the network topology, the pathways with which the data flows in the network, to move away from a centralized uh, relay style network where there's a small number of nodes that are run by a small number of participants uh, propagating the data, and instead moving to kind of a, a kind of a, an interconnected uh, mesh network of nodes where data can flow in many different directions between participants. And so this, again, both of these things increase the security, the decentralization, and I think um, the, uh, the sexiness of the network and uh, as a place to be. Okay, everyone look up for those consensus incentives. Okay, so it's becoming more sexy. That's, that's where we're going. <laughs> what else would you like to see more of in, within the greater industry? Where do you think we should be heading towards? Now that you've, like, you've, you're you kind of a veteran in this space, so what ideal future do you envision? I think there's, there's two kind of broad points. Uh, the first is interoperability is important. That's not just bridging liquidity uh, between these networks. It's not just like, oh, does my, does my shitcoin on, 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 on Ledger A exist on Ledger B? Instead, it's like, how can we do ISO type standardization? Can we define exactly how an option or a swap or a bond or a coupon or whatever looks at a base level and then keep that data model uh, you know, uh, intact across all the different chains so that when you bridge your apps, sorry, when you bridge your assets, you don't need to also then have some kind of translation on the, on the, on the data model, right? You can just assume that this is what an option looks like in Web3. And I think that's important, that level of interoperability. And that takes people to stand back and drop the partisanship, right? To stand back and not be so biased uh, towards their own standards and to kind of reach um, a place that they are in nonpartisan agreement as to what standards are. Um, that's one thing. And the second thing um, is the user experience. It still sucks, I think. Uh, you know, this 24 word stuff, um, of course, there is an information theory limit on the representation of a private key, and of course we have to represent it in some way, but there are definitely things we can do um, better than what we're doing today. It's still not acceptable that someone has crypto assets in their 70s and then loses them because they forget a key. Uh, I know people who like lose sleep over that. They're like so paranoid that they're gonna lose it or forget it or whatever. So we definitely need better mechanisms to store these things. All right, last question for you, John. Since we are in Paris Blockchain Week, I wanted to ask, what is one of your favorite things and one of your least favorite things about Paris or France? Okay, good question. Um, I think favorite things is the quality of the food. So the rillette, the truffle, um, the cured meats, the cheeses. Um, it's just unbelievably good. The food and the wine, unbelievably good. And I love wine and I love food. Um, the worst thing is the coffee. I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a coffee snob, a pig. Like. Um, I care deeply about my coffee. Uh, I buy very light roast. I grind fresh every day. I'm meticulous about it. And France, France has like this this rep of like, oh, it's everything's great here: the food, wine, the drink, the beverages, etc. But it's not the case. The coffee tastes like ash. You know, it's like they burned down a couple of houses, scraped off the black stuff, and threw it into a cup with some water. So, okay. do better, Paris. Bring that up with the government then. But you're right on the food front. 
Most people have said that. I agree. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time today, John. Enjoy the rest of Paris and enjoy the conference. Thank you, Ornella. And everyone, go check out Algo and these new Algo kits if you're interested. And stay tuned for more interviews.